TV Island Hub today. We're on the island of Ambergris Key, where you, the viewers, are going to learn about the Turks Island Rainbow Boa. The first ever study of Turks Island Rainbow Boas is being conducted by Turks and Caicos Sporting Club at Conservation and Research for Endangered Species. Dr. Glenn Gerber of the San Diego Zoo in California says they are working closely with Turks and Caicos Sporting Club at Ambergris Key to study the native and rare Turks Island Rainbow Boa. It's really about ensuring that these animals are going to be around for future generations of, of Turks and Caicos inhabitants to enjoy. Um, and we're also trying to educate people that, you know, they're harmless snakes, uh, they're not poisonous, they actually play a beneficial role in the environment. Dr. Gerber explained that the snakes are nocturnal and therefore hunting is done at night when the reptiles are slithering about. But these slippery creatures are actually easy to catch, according to Gerber. The study just started about a year ago, actually. Graham came down last December, um, December 2007 and uh, captured 50 animals in a couple weeks working here. And we knew this was a, probably the densest population left of Turks and Caicos boas in the islands. Um, and because there is development here, it's obviously critical to, one to, to understand. Um, but also because there's development here, there's, there's enough infrastructure that it facilitates our being able to study them. We don't have to camp on the island, and, you know, we can fly in and, and do our work relatively easily. Um, and then I came back a, a couple months later with my team, we captured some more, and now Graham and I are down here together to spend a week um, concentrating on just boas. Graham Reynolds of the University of Tennessee explains his role, which includes, among other things, getting to know the behavior and habitat of a rainbow boa. We're also looking at how they respond to development. Um, we'd like to know basically how humans are impacting these animals. Uh, in addition, we're also looking at the genetics of these animals, which will allow us to do a lot of different things, including um, maybe see which populations should be prioritized for protection. And history was made in this mission to save the snake. A new group record was set. We captured 60 last year and we got 14 last night, which was our first night out, um, which is a new, a new record for us in terms of the number of animals in one night. So. We're hopeful that uh, we'll try and get another 60 at least this trip and uh, maybe more. The group hopes to understand more of the Boa's natural history and ecology so that developers like the Turks and Caicos Sporting Club devise ways to preserve in the midst of progress. For PTV Newswatch on Amber Grisky, I'm Davia Chambers in the Echo Zone. When you travel to Ambergris Key, the first thing many people notice are the phenomenal iguanas. Before the island was developed, Dr. Glenn Gerber of the San Diego Zoo in California estimated there to have been as many as 18,000 of the land-loving reptiles. Dr. Glenn Gerber first came to the country in 1995 for a project with the Turks and Caicos National Trust. The aim was to determine which islands did and did not support iguanas and to clarify why. Gerber says he found out some unfortunate facts. Iguanas have been extirpated from about 95% of their natural range. So historically they would have been on almost every island except for some very, very small islands that don't have vegetation. So iguanas are herbivorous, means they eat vegetation. Iguanas can exist on smaller islands, unlike its predator, the snake. Most recently, the team has been trying to boost the iguana population, according to Dr. Gerber where they were extirpated by um, feral cats and dogs. Cats are particularly bad. Dogs, dogs are, eat adults um, but can only survive on islands that have water. Cats can survive on very small islands, islands that don't have a constant source of water. Iguana numbers have seen a surge and six keys in the TCI are the beneficiaries of the intervention by the San Diego Zoo team. Two of those are being used as source islands and that is where Ambergris Key plays an important role because it is the nursery for iguanas. The other island, which is home to a large iguana population, is Little Water Key. Fortunately, Little Water Key now has cats which have crossed over the land bridge at Half Moon Bay from Pine Key and Water Key, which used to have large populations of iguanas which were extirpated by the cats and the dogs. Um, 
So we've moved iguanas to the five keys, to the two largest five keys, bay and middle off of Provo. We've moved iguanas to uh, the Six Hills Keys, to Bush Key and to French Key. And another group has moved iguanas to Long Key, south of South Caicos. Gerba claimed that he will continue to come to the TCI to monitor all those populations. But also when we come back a year later, if we see juvenile iguanas, we know there's been successful reproduction. Um, and all those populations are reproducing and thriving and growing. The Turks and Caicos will need to create more predator-free islands in order for the iguanas to remain preserved, according to Dr. Glenn Gerber. As for who loves to eat iguanas, the common household cat. I'm Davia Chambers in the Echo Zone.